All this is Dr. Mobeen Sayed from drbean.com. Welcome to one more show. Uh, as promised yesterday, today we're going to talk about uh, Russia's vaccine, Sputnik. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. Let's look at that. The efficacy right in the beginning, the efficacy after 20 days of the first dose is supposed to be about 91.6%. What I do not have is the detailed discussion of the demography or the uh, side effects types or the um, uh, the effects of the um, uh, vaccine. So I think more data will become available. And as it becomes available, we'll talk more about it. But I'm going to go over the data that has been shown so far. So with this, let's start. And once again, thank you to everyone who has become a patron or patron. So here we are. Um, this is what I was introducing yesterday, that we are on Patreon. And then, <laughs> as somebody said on YouTube, so Luffy pulled the plug. So here is the Patreon. Now we have 11 patrons, and we have $102 per month. So thank you very much, everyone. This is the Ivermectin man. This is Ivermectin's normal role. This is Ivermectin's role in the case of SARS-CoV-2, that it prevents the viral cargo from going into the nucleus. And so the, the nucleus can continue to make interferon, messengers for interferon, which cause the nearby cells to become stronger. Then here, if you see, Ivermectin man can also block the SARS-CoV-2's protein from binding to ACE2 receptor. And finally, over here on the right side, if you see, the Ivermectin man can block the enzyme RDRP of the SARS-CoV-2 and the three chymotrypsin-like enzyme, uh, which helps break down the proteins of the, of the virus. So these are the general effects. The one effect that is not here is the anti-inflammatory effect that it blocks, ivermectin blocks nuclear factor kappa B as well. So I thought just from this header of the Patreon, you can actually see all the functions of ivermectin. All right, so let's start. Here is the um, an article in Lancet. This is the article that is about this article. So this is another article in Lancet. And this article is by the, um, if I hope I can pronounce correctly, Dennis Y. Logunov. And he is the inventor of or maker of the vaccine as well. So what happens is this is the article by Logunov and his team. This interim result is not coming from some interim agency some independent agency that looks at the data and says, you know what, here is what we see. This is the interim results are actually reported by the manufacturing uh, team. And then this article over here simply refers to the other article and then summarizes it once more. So I don't think it's nothing, anything new. So if you see here, Dennis Lugunov and colleague report their interim results from phase three trial, and that is this. So these both articles are actually the same thing. Then here is, it is interesting. This is the Sputnik's own website. And they talk about some of their vaccine technology and how it is made and the results. And finally, this is another page on Wikipedia about the Sputnik. And somebody, <laughs> there, are, there are folks who continue to put this message that do not trust Wikipedia. Look. Um, there is a way to study and read things. And one important thing is to look at the references and then go and check those references. I look at Wikipedia, I look at their references, and then I make up my mind that if that part of the discussion is fine or not. And then in cases of drugs or others, I actually go and look at pharmacology books as well. So I think I am a little bit more careful when I'm looking at it and I'm not just generally picking up everything from here. Having said that, Wikipedia has become a pretty good source. All right, so let's start. I'm going to go to my illustrations. So here is my way of presenting it. So first of all, the reason that it is called Sputnik is that it is named after the Russian 
uh, rocket Sputnik 1, and that rocket had spurred a movement of advancement for Russia and for humanity. So they believe that their vaccine is a Sputnik movement again for them and for humanity. So this is my depiction of Sputnik 1 rocket. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. If not, my apologies. OK, so let's look at it. The trial data that we are seeing, it was from 7 September to November 24th, 2020. The Sputnik was registered on August 2020. Vaccine's name is also GAM COVID VAC. So GAM for Gamalia, which is the company that made it. And then COVID, of course, for COVID and VAC for vaccine. Company that made it, it, it is state-backed company called Gamalia Research Institute of Epidemiology and Microbiology. Vaccine type. This is an interesting vaccine. It is adenovirus type vaccine. However, please remember that uh, the Oxford vaccine is also ad adenovirus, but that adenovirus is chimpanzee adenovirus. And the reason they used chimpanzee's adenovirus is that human adenovirus or the cold, common cold viruses, we are mostly immune to them or we have anti antibodies against them. So if you have a vaccine that is made up of human adenovirus and you inject it into us, our antibodies will already be ready to attack it and kill it. So the, the vaccine may get destroyed before even if it does its function. Because of that, Oxford, AstraZeneca, they decided to use chimpanzee adenovirus. Here, the adenovirus used is human adenovirus. This is the same technology that is also in Johnson & Johnson. This is why Sputnik came out and said, well, if Johnson & Johnson is effective, then we are effective as well. The other thing is, remember they said that their first part is like us and the second part is not like us. The reason for that is the Sputnik vaccine actually has two doses. And the first dose is adenovirus 26, one, one variant of adenovirus human adenovirus. And the other dose is adenovirus number five, another variant of human adenovirus. Because of this, they said, hey, Johnson & Johnson is like our first dose. And I'll explain more a little later. What does this mean? Cell factories, I could not find any data anywhere that what kind of cell factories are used to make these adenovirus. Are these uh, fetal tissue copy the cells that are copies of the fetal tissue or clones from the fetal tissue, or are these uh, uh, just like in case of Covaxin Bharat's technology, which is made in the uh, African green monkeys' uh, kidney cells? So I did not, I could not find it. Maybe I didn't see hard enough, but I couldn't find the cell factories. Antigen production, they have the DNA for the full length uh, spike protein in it. So this is a spike protein based um, antigen as well. Adjuvants, there are no adjuvants in this technology. Instead, the adenovirus itself becomes an adjuvant, meaning adenovirus has enough messenger RNA of its own, not only messenger RNA, its own DNA, plus the virus has its own particle structure. That is enough to trigger the immune system Plus, we have the vaccine, the spike protein DNA as well, which will make spike proteins. So all of that is enough of a trigger for the immune system that separate adjuvants are not needed. That is according to the data or, or the articles. Availability, I am not sure. I would say that they have been pushing for it, and I think they're using it in Russia as well. Um, the There are emergency use authorizations in some countries in Europe, and they are now applying for more authorizations as well. Storage, this is interesting. They can be stored, this vaccine can be stored at zero degree Fahrenheit or eight, minus 18 degrees centigrade. And there is a fro freeze dried version as well, which is a little bit tough to make. But what happens is you take the vaccine and you freeze it. And when you freeze it, the water which is frozen into ice, you remove that. So what is left is the dried, frozen vaccine. 
and then that vaccine is transported. The frozen dried vaccine is more difficult to make, but it can actually stay at um, for a longer period of time. So normally two to eight degrees centigrade, which is normal refrigeration time, or sorry, temperature, or 36 to 46 degree Fahrenheit. So frozen dried vaccine can actually be stored at low, at uh, fridge uh, levels, temperatures, for a longer period of time. The reason that they are doing this is that there are parts of Russian country which are remote, and the vaccine would reach there after some delay, in, uh, and the transport would take time to reach there, so they don't want the vaccine to be spoiled. So they have two versions of the vaccine. One is a cold storage, cold chain needing version, and the other one is the one that can go in the normal refrigeration temperature. That is storage. Now let's look at the dose. Dose is similar to the others that we have seen, the adenovirus type, and that is 10 raised to power 10 uh, particles. So that's, I think, about uh, billion, 10 billion or 100 billion, something like that. So I have to write 10 zeros and see what is that number. But 10 raised to power 10 or 10 raised to power 11 virus particles. One dose is lesser than $10. So remember, this is a two-dose vaccine. So anywhere from $10 to $20. Dose is 0 0.5 milliliter per dose. So first dose, 0 0.5 milliliter. Then the second dose, 0 0.5 milliliter. The first dose is the vaccine in adenovirus vaccine that is using adenovirus 26 version. The second dose is adenovirus 5 version. So both doses are different kind of adenoviruses. And the benefit of that is that our immune system will not have a chance to attack the same virus again the next time when it appears. So the first time it was adenovirus type 26, next time it is 5. So we can kind of trigger the immune system a little bit more. So uh, on their site, there is an interesting chart that I saw. So if you go down on this site, here they're showing. So look at this, two different adenovirus-based vaccines. So they are saying that this is Sputnik vaccine, the green one. It is adenovirus 26 plus adenovirus 5 versus other, uh, other things, for example, AstraZeneca, adenovirus 26, both doses, or versus something else, which is adenovirus 5 only. So they are saying our mixture of 26 and 5 is actually more uh, immune triggering, more effective compared to others. Interesting idea. So two separate ones. So the benefit of that is that different human viruses are to overcome the pre-existing immunity. So if you are already immune to, let's say, 26, then 5 will bother you more or your immune system. But if you are already good with five, then 26 will bother you more. So they kind of are switching them up. AstraZeneca, for example, is chimpanzee adenovirus. Johnson & Johnson that we talked about yesterday was um, adenovirus 26. And CanSino, the China and Canada's combination, is adenovirus 5. So that, that I think, is interesting. Then phase three interim results. So I have to show you where I'm getting the data from. So one is this summary of the article. The other one is the actual article itself. And that's it. I do not have, there is some data that I picked up from here as well. But what I do not have is the kind of PDF data that I am used to presenting you um, for example, for Pfizer or Moderna. I am sure it is somewhere. I have to just look for it. And once I find it, I'll go in more detail. So at this time, these are the three references, one, two, and three. And the data here is based on those. So this vaccine has been administered in, the, in Russia to 31,000 folks. Then the phase three trial has been done in UAE, India, Venezuela, and Belarus. So these are the countries that have been 
used in the or the participants came from these countries. There is an interesting thing. So please see UAE, India, Venezuela and Belarus. But you would see that they say that majority of the people taking part in the vaccine trial are white. So after having folks from these communities, even then, if majority is white, then that they, that is a problem. Anyways, let's continue to look at the data. 19,866 participants. So interim results from these folks because they were all given two doses. There are other folks who are still waiting for the second dose. So they're not included in this result. So 19,866, so let's say 20,000 participants, two doses they have all received. And then there were 78 confirmed cases of the infection. So at the 78 confirmed cases, they stopped and did the interim analysis. The trial is still continuing and they would report the other result later on. And based on this, cohort or based on this much data, they are saying that the vaccine is 91.6% efficacious in uh, preventing the disease, mild to moderate disease. And in addition to that, uh, I saw that most of the discussions about this vaccine also had somehow um, a tone of salesy thing too, which I'm fine with, no, no problems. 1.2 billion people vaccination, that means 2.4 billion doses have been uh, ordered or requested from 50 countries. So they're saying that here we, we have order of 2.4 billion doses or one, doses for 1.2 billion people. And um, what was I going to show you? So I, was, I was going to show you this as well. So at the end of Sputnik's own page, if you see here, they talk about attitude towards the Sputnik 5 vaccine in Russia. So that is the attitude within Russia. Then if you look at it, their, their confidence level in the world. So I think there is a, they feel that uh, some somewhat lack of confidence. And so then they feel it necessary to provide data to kind of a ramp up uh, that, hey, don't worry. So if you see here, level of confidence in Mexico in the vaccine, depending on its uh, country of origin. So this is Me Mexico's, if the country of origin is Russia, the level of confidence is high. We're talking about Mexico. If it is from U US, then it is 31%. If it is UK, 30%, France, 28%, Mexico, 22 China, 20 Russia is the highest. So they they are kind of saying that, hey, we are trusted. And that's fine. Uh, they feel necessary to provide that information. And that's OK. Now, continuing on, D some more details about the trial. 20,000 people participated. 25% were in placebo or one third, I believe, about one third, 25% in placebo. So one article said one third, other article said 25%, which is one quarter. So I just took the numbers from one article and these were these numbers. So 25% people, 4,902 had, and this 4,922 is actually out of 19,866, not 20,000. So they, they were on placebo. <laughs> and did you notice that I have drawn the human slightly different. I'm trying to learn how to draw better. So uh, different humans today. Uh, so placebo, these. And there was one death in the placebo group, but that was unrelated to vaccine. There were 62 confirmed cases of the uh, COVID infection 20 days, 21 days after the first dose. So. Placebo folks, when they got the first dose, and of course that was a placebo dose, 20 days after, out of these 4,902 people, 62 had gotten the infection. So that was 1.3% of the group. On the other hand, if you look at the vaccinated group, 75% were vaccinated, 14,964. They Again, there were three deaths in this group, but 
these were also deemed unrelated to vaccine. 16 people became infected by SARS-CoV-2 20 days after 21 days after the first dose. So this was 0.1% of the group. So these numbers are, they are different by 91.6%. So that is how the efficacy was calculated. And that is how efficacy is calculated for all vaccines. So this is the, a little more de detail here, adverse effects. Again, this was uh, interesting for me. Somebody had commented out, I remember I had made a little uh, laughing face with the adverse effect with Johnson & Johnson. So somebody said that you are making fun of the people who had adverse effects. So no, that's not the case. I was, uh, commenting on people who received saline. They did not receive another adenovirus or men meningococcal vaccine as in UK. They received saline and they were more adverse effects. So to me, that was funny that Johnson & Johnson is saying people who got saline reported more adverse effects than the one who got adenovirus. It is unbelievable for me. Anyways, that's what they said. So here, <clears throat> adverse effects. Zero vaccine-related adverse reactions. So this is something that is really not believable to me. But they're saying zero vaccine-related serious side effect. Fine. Uh, or adverse effect. I have to actually look at the adverse effect data to see fever and myalgia and, and pain. They're saying zero. Very interesting. If that is the way, then beautiful vaccine. Non-vaccine related side effects. So non-vaccine related side effects, some, just some side effects. Why did they occur? I don't know. They are saying 45 participants in the vaccine group reported some side effects, some, uh, some things that the group said were not related to the vaccine. The placebo group reported 23 side effects that were also not uh, deemed related to the vaccine. So I, they should not be called side effects. Side effect is of something. So they're called serious adverse effects. And they are said zero serious adverse effect in general from the vaccine. And then there were some people who reported some adverse effect. I want to show it to you because it almost seems impossible to say or comprehend. But if you see here, Uh, let me go. So I believe it is here. Where is it? Here, no serious adverse events considered related to the vaccine were recorded, but serious adverse events re unrelated to the vaccine were reported in 45 participants from the vaccine group and 23 participants from the placebo group. I honestly have no idea what does this mean. If you are just saying that there were no adverse effects, then simply say there were no adverse effects. Why are you then saying, well, there are some serious adverse events. They're not saying side effects. They're just calling adverse events. People calling in and saying, hey, I am feeling dizzy. So maybe that's just it, that 45 participants in, in the vaccinated group called in with some adverse event that was not related to the vaccine and 23 from placebo. This is what it is for the time being. I am going to look at their PDFs as well to see if there is more data in there. So this is the discussion of the vaccine. What is interesting for me is two separate adenovirus, human adenovirus. They're not chimpanzee adenovirus. What is the data that is lacking for me is number one, cell factories. Number two, kind of adverse reactions, fever, myalgia, those how is it possible that there is none in any one of them out of 15,000 people? So that is something that is interesting for me that, hey, where is that data? 
And if you're really saying that we give the injection and nothing happens, then this is a miracle here, which is 91% effective as well. So um, the other thing that I am missing here is the data on the immunocompromised data on the risk. Uh, I wanted to read you this. Check this out. This is the population greater than 18 years. 60% were males. All, almost all were whites. And 25% had, had comorbidities. So uh, what about the ethnic groups? What happened there? What is the result there? What were the comorbidities? What is the protection there? What is the protection from serious? What is the uh, cases uh, from the deaths and so on? So that data is still missing, at least for me. I'm going to continue to look for that and talk about it. Still, there is some data. Again, this data is reported by the manufacturing team of the vaccine. It is not coming from some third in party, which is independent. So this is the discussion for today. Um, how do you want to do it? Should we stop here? And then if you like, I can come back online and we can have a chat. That way, this video would stay um, compressed and short. What do you think? OK, so let me do this. I am going to hang up here and then come back in two minutes, and we will chat. And sorry, yeah, before I forget, uh, in the description, there are a few links. So number one, please like, subscribe, and share. Number two, if you wanted to become my patron, there is a link to the Patreon in the description. If you wanted to buy me a coffee, there is a link for that as well. And if you just wanted to support my work, there is a link for that as well. No pressure. It is not necessary. I have received some comments from some cool beans that, hey, I'm sorry, I'm not in a position to donate to you. And please, no pressure. I have never actually wanted that as a return for my service, you have to pay. That is never the case. I have never looked at it that way. So if you would like to donate and support, awesome. If you cannot, you are as welcome as anybody else. And I love you the same as anybody else. So I'll see you in a few minutes.